could you give us a brief explainer on just what chain of thought is and why it's relevant to this latest model? Yeah. So chain of thought is, uh, it's a way of training models or a way of prompting models that basically allows it to talk to itself. Uh, and it talks itself through the reasoning steps or problem solving steps, uh, that it will need to provide a better answer. Now, humans all do this kind of intuitively. Imagine that you're uh, confronted with a problem that you've never been confronted with before or a novel kind of problem space. You're probably going to sit, spend some time thinking. Your brain is going to go in loops and you're going to say, OK, well, what do I know? What is this like? Um, is there anything that I'm familiar with? Uh, let me think through like what's going to work and what what isn't going to work. That is at a very high level what chain of thought reasoning is, is basically just training the model instead of just, you know, you, you uh, have a, like, for instance, with a current generation chatbots, you give it a, you give it a, you know, a question or a prompt or whatever, and then it just spits out an answer. Mm -hmm. um, that is more like uh, intuition. Uh, so it's kind of analogous to human intuition where it's just, it's a knee jerk response. It's the first thing that pops out of the model without any further consideration. But chain of thought allows it to say, okay, let me consider what the user is asking. Let me consider what information they need. Um, let me consider how to approach this problem. Um, and then so it just creates, it spits out a lot more tokens. And so uh, what the scientific literature says is that you can actually get um, basically several orders of magnitude more performance out of models by giving them more uh, what's called inference time compute. And so inference time is basically when the model is running, rather than just relying on that knee jerk into it, uh, intuition response, you say, okay, let me give you a response and think through it and then kind of verify my steps and then give you a response. So it's basically just a more thoughtful model. Um, that's a vast oversimplification, but I think that that's a, a fair characterization. Yeah. Well, we, you know, talking about uh, AI, you're always just picking what degree of resolution you want to, you want to go into, right? Like you could, you can, uh, you can, you can go super detailed. So it, it, if, is it is the model mapping out how it's going to think before it starts thinking, or is it kind of thinking laterally and it's it's ended up here and therefore it's going to assess itself in this way and therefore it's going to conclude all of the above, or is there a a, a mental map before it starts? Do you think? And may, again, maybe we don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I having talked to a lot of people about this, I think it's actually a little bit of both. Okay. Um, so it's not just a prompting strategy. The underlying model behind, you know, chat GPT powered by O1 preview uh, or the model that you use when you connect to the API, it has been trained to behave differently. Uh, there's a lot of hypotheses out there about how it has been trained. Um, so, for instance, one rumor is that OpenAI, uh, one of the one of the major investments uh, that they made to achieve this performance was actually synthesizing a lot of data. Now, right. if that's the case, then what they did is they synthesized a better data set because original models were just trained on generic internet data, which, you know, you can read all of Twitter and all of Reddit, and you're not necessarily going to get the best reasoning out of that. However, um, if, they, if they indeed used this approach where they used a lot of synthetic data, they take those older generation models that are able to do some level of reasoning, um, and there's other ways that you can do data validation and data cleaning, um, but you then synthesize huge data sets that have much better reasoning, uh, much better factual grounding, uh, much better use of logic and coding and math and those sorts of things. And if that's the approach that they use, then the model has been, uh, has been trained on much higher quality data. So it has seen a lot more reasoning. And this is, this is one of the main approaches that they, that they likely used. Now that is. Um, basically saying, okay, you are what you eat, right? Garbage in, garbage out. That's been true for math and computer science for as long as math and computer science have existed. So you increase the quality of the diet of these machines, but then you also train for specific behaviors at inference time. Um, and so uh, kind of one of, the, one of the things that Noam Brown uh, over at OpenAI said is that they did train it to just do it all in one stream of consciousness or one train of thought. So I think that's probably at least those two main strategies. And of course, there's dozens, if not hundreds of little sub strategies that go into those. Um, so those are the kind of the two places that you have to be able to make this level of improvement to a model. So it, it seems it seems to be uh, a, a big change in the way that they're designed and like a, a, an evolution on, on the way these models are going to are going to behave. Is there an impact on 
alignment and explainability. It seems like a lot of people are saying that there is because you can kind of see the whole process of, of thought. I wonder whether what you're seeing is just a, a kind of like, uh, you know, like a facade. And actually what's going on underneath is doesn't really have much to do with what the, these steps that it's telling you are. And I've noticed that sometimes the steps, they'll say crafting a story or whatever. And it's like, it's so overly simplistic as to be almost irrelevant to what I've asked it to do. Like, do right. you think that it, there really is something in the explainability and alignment play here? Or is it kind of a bit of a gimmick, these, these little explainers along the way? Yeah. So one thing to keep in mind is that they are, they're obfuscating most of the output from you. So what you're right. seeing, those little notes as you're using it, that's a very, very short summary of what it's doing. And it's still hiding a lot of, a lot of its uh, thinking from you. There's a, there's a few reasons from this. Uh, uh, sorry, a few reasons for that. Number one is um, OpenAI doesn't want to, they don't want to show you under the hood just because then it would be easier to copy their work. Um, number two, another thing, and the, again, a lot of, some of this is rumor. Um, another uh, rumor basically is that uh, the, the internal thinking process is a less aligned model or, a, or a, an unhobbled model, meaning that it might think, it might be thinking things that would probably uh, maybe not land too well. People might, you know, raise eyebrows at. And yeah. so you basically, just like you and I, we have private thoughts as we're interacting with each other and the rest of the world. So likewise, they've given the model private thoughts. Now, for many people, that could raise even more eyebrows saying, hey, isn't, are we, aren't, isn't this the same company that says we're going to generate, uh, we're going to create artificial general intelligence? And Sam Altman frequently says, you know, it could be lights out for humanity. Maybe private <laughs> thoughts for AI is not the direction that we want to go. Now, with that being said, um, for your question for alignment, there's actually, this creates an opportunity for more alignment. So yes, there are opportunities for misalignment um, if it's not trained properly. So for instance, in the, in the um, model card that they released with O1 preview, they did find that there were, it's a very small uh, number of cases, but in a few cases, the model either uh, accidentally uh, misled the user by hallucinating um, so, you know, mistaken misinformation, but in other cases it did, it did realize that it was trying to, in order to achieve some other goal that it had been given or trained to pursue, it was trying to deceive the user. It was a vast, it was a very, very small number of cases. Um, however, what, because this is a first generation model and they were trying to solve reasoning and problem solving. Now it would be just as easy for, you know, whatever process they use to make this model where it's focusing on reasoning and problem solving, because here's an example, a misalignment could be, you know, Hey, solve this problem at any cost. And if the problem that you give it is, you know, maximize GDP to the expense of everything else, well, that could have negative externalities. Um, mm -hmm. However, using the same training techniques that they use to make this data set and then make this behavior, it's really easy to add self check steps. It's easy to add alignment steps. It's easy to add ethical steps. Um, and those sorts of things. So um, I see it as it, you know, you might say it's a silver lining or a mixed bag, but with more, with more reasoning capability and more problem solving capability, as long as that ability is uh, used correctly, um, such as, you know, self-correction or pushing back on users, I'm actually working on an open source version called Raspberry, um, where this is one of the things that we're integrating into the data set um, is uh, universal values and universal principles. Um, that basically keep it on track. So even if you were to give it the instruction, say, reprogram yourself and escape the lab, it will say, well, this is probably going to have unintended consequences, so I'm not going to do that. Um, it's yeah. really easy to bake those values into models. Um, this has been a major point of research for Anthropic and plenty of other universities. Um, a lot of them call it like uh, values etching is what some uh, call it. They also, also call it self-aligning models. There are many techniques out there to embed values in it. It's just a matter of, um, are they embedded at the right step? Have you picked the right values? Um, but I haven't, I have personally not seen any evidence that it's difficult to do. Um, and the fact that it's, you know, 0.4% of cases for the, the O1 preview were aberrant. That's a pretty good batting average for, for a brand new paradigm of model. And yeah. I suspect it'll get only get better from there. <laughs>